As you know, there are basically two types of diabetes generally uh, recognized at this point, and of course they're called type 1 and type 2. Type 2 happens mostly in younger people, not entirely, but mostly. In type 1, the cells that make insulin, called the pancreas islet cells, they die. And so there isn't any insulin. And if there isn't any insulin, then there's nothing to regulate the blood sugar, so the blood sugar goes up. We have a situation with low or no insulin, usually no insulin, and high blood sugar. Type 2 is very different. That happens mostly in people who are adult, and as little as 20 or 30 years ago, it was mostly people past 50, and now uh, we're finding people in their 40s, people in their 30s, even a few teenagers with type 2 diabetes. That's a very different type. In type 2, those cells that died in type 1 that make insulin, they're perfectly alive and they're making insulin. But the tissues of the body are resisting the action of insulin. So since insulin, one of its functions is to take the sugar from the blood and move it into the cells so the cells can burn it for energy, if there's a resistance to that, well, those cells have to make more insulin to overcome the resistance and put the sugar into the cells. But that's not the way that nature intended for there to be extra insulin, so the resistance grows stronger. So these cells have to make more insulin and the resistance gets stronger, and there's more insulin, and the resistance grows stronger, and there's more insulin, and we get to the point where the resistance is so strong the insulin can't work anymore, and so we have high insulin, and since it's not working, the blood sugar goes up too. So in type 2, we have high insulin and high sugar, and it has a lot to do with this insulin resistance. Now, that is a bit oversimplified, but that's the general picture of this Ever run into a three-year-old that doesn't want to listen to mom and can't hear? And so mom has to yell, and then the three-year-old can hear. But then if mom keeps yelling, the three-year-old can't hear anymore. That's kind of like insulin resistance and more insulin and more, uh, more insulin and more resistance and so forth. So the question is, why do folks make too much insulin in the first place? And here comes the resistance and more insulin, more resistance. It really is very, very, very simple. Medical anthropologists have answered this for us. It has to do with a mismatch between the genetics that one in three people have, as you said, and the food in the world right now. Way too much in the way of refined sugar, refined carbohydrate. Now, if we take all of us and we go back several hundred years, there wasn't any refined sugar. At the time of King Henry VIII, and let's see, for those who don't remember history, that was only, what, 400, 500 years ago, refined sugar was more costly than gold, weight for weight. Nobody was refining sugar. Ancient Egyptians were refining sugar, so the price was probably a little lower then, but there just wasn't any refined sugar around. And nobody was refining flour and separating the bran and the germ, which are the good part, and making white flour products. And particularly with the increase in type 2 diabetes in the last 20 years, nobody was adding fructose to everything. You've noticed high fructose corn syrup, high fructose this, fructose here, fructose there. And when fructose isn't added, well, sucrose is added, another simple sugar. If we go back several hundred years, there wasn't any refined food. Sorry about that. All right, well, when we put these refined foods into some of us, that's at one in three, the pancreas just makes way too much insulin to overcome that flood of sugar. I really do mean a flood of sugar. In one can of whatever that cola stuff is, let's not mention its name, there is six times more sugar than is in an eight-year-old's bloodstream. So here this eight-year-old is glugging on a can of sugar. Eight times more sugar than is naturally in there comes in. What's the kid's body going to do? It goes into an emergency mode and has to make a whole bunch of insulin to process this. And in those one in three, the body starts setting up an in, a resistance to that ex excess insulin. So just simply the mismatch between our present diets and the diets that existed a 1,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago, 
has got a lot to do with why we get type 2 diabetes. 